Microsoft Cloud. There we go. Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Roger Paul, and tonight we are going to continue with our study of the higher personalities of the infinite spirit. That's paper 24, and we're in section two, the census directors, directors and that's on page 266, paragraph seven of the original book. So let's say a little prayer and we'll get started. Father, thank you for bringing us together tonight that we might study your wonderful revelation. Great that you'll watch over this group, help us remember some of this so we can share it with others. We can prepare ourselves for the mansion world and we can make our life more fuller and do your will in our life. We pray that you'll bless this group tonight, watch over us, open our hearts and minds. We thank you in the name of your son, Michael, Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. Okay. Diane, you're first up there. You want to take that first part? To the census directors, notwithstanding that the cosmic mind of the universal intelligence is cognizant of the presence and whereabouts of all thinking creatures, there is operative in the universe of universes an independent method of keeping count of all will creatures. I wanted to point this out tonight when we first got started on the section that it says the cosmic mind of the universal intelligence. Guess who that's through? Infinite the spirit. The infinite spirit. That's right. And he knows where every saint knows about every thought and all thinking creatures. Isn't that nice? To the cosmic <laughs> mind. So you can't get away with anything, right? <laughs> yeah, Millie. <laughs> It says will creatures. Will creatures. That's right. That's only human beings, not the not part of the cosmic mind or the animals, right? That's part of the local universe, mother spirit's job. Okay. And it's uh, um, interesting that they do say just will creatures. So they take into account all the other creatures, right? Now, let's go on to the next one. We'll discuss this a little bit more. Pam, would you take the next paragraph? Please? Sure. Um, the census directors are a special and completed creation of the infinite spirit, and they exist in numbers unknown to us. They are so created as to be able to maintain perfect synchrony with the reflectivity technique of the super universes, while at the same time, they are personally sensitive and responsive to intelligent will. These directors by a not fully understood technique are made immediately aware of the birth of will in any part of the grand universe. They are therefore always competent to give us the number, nature, and whereabouts of all will creatures in any part of the central creation and the seven super universes, but they do not function on paradise. There is no need for them there. On paradise, knowledge is inherent. The deities know all things. And isn't this interesting that the paradise deities, we're talking about God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, already know where everyone is all the time in paradise. Isn't that interesting? But in the rest of the universe, they need the census directors to keep uh, a complete count for the infinite spirit, all right, for all will creatures outside of paradise and that includes Havana okay so I wanted to point that out perfection is in paradise but what's not in Havana total perfection right it's relative perfection in Havana and Gary I thought I better let you know we're live streaming tonight to Facebook at the same time we're streaming to our recording okay so I have um, to watch my language so you got to watch your language, keep your shirt on, you know, pat your head, whatever. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we could get censored. <laughs> we could get censored at any time. That's right. <laughs> we probably already have been. They just don't let me know. Okay. So intelligent will creatures. The census directors are responsible for a will creature from the moment of birth. Do you see that? 
All right, so they know the exact number in the seven super universes of every being from the time they are born to the time they are died. Now, why is it till the time they are die? They die. At that point, they're either counted among what? The Marancha beings or they have found them to be non-salvageable, right? So if you're found to be non-salvageable, you no longer would be counted. Make sense? Well, then they take it, they do a subtraction, I would say. Yeah, I, yeah, they would have to subtract you, at, you know, out of the picture completely if, if you defaulted and were non-salvageable, right? Now, this is going to be interesting, too, because of what? With the Lucifer Rebellion, when judgment finally comes in the Lucifer Rebellion, and those beings that have not repented or, or not set up some kind of program to, to repent and straighten out, those beings will all be subtracted when? At the same time, right? As soon as judgment is passed on those beings. So, Roger, right. I have a question. Yeah, go right ahead. If you'll um, go back to that paragraph. Paragraph, yeah, please. sure. There we go. Okay. Um, it says uh, they are therefore always competent to give us the number. Who is yes. us? The ancients of days keeps track okay. of all that. Okay. And including in that us is those beings that are in charge of keeping track of the number right because because what they're concerned with is what just the this look the just the super universe they're in right and if they're local universe since they're census directors they're just concerned with the local universe right and we're going to find that out down here in this little picture here see this little next little picture we have reserves of the census directors on the paradise worlds of the spirit Okay, and these, this is the reserve core. But in Havona itself, notice Havona has seven census directors. You see that? Mm -hmm. And notice that the super universes have seven census directors. You see that also? Okay. Why is there only seven? Because there's one for each pilot world of Havona, right? And there's one for a totaling one for each super universe, okay? That's why there's only seven of each of those. Now, why would there even be beings such as this on Havona and the super universes, but not on Paradise? On Paradise, they know it automatically, right? But when you go to Havona and you go from one stage spirit being to another, you know, when we get to um, Havona will probably be at fourth stage spirits, okay? When you change from a fourth stage spirit to a fifth stage spirit, what does that do? That changes the count of those amounts of spirits, okay? Uh -huh. So these census directors have to keep track of what group you're in. Make sense? Totaling the groups. Okay. Did you have a question, Gary? No. Oh, okay. Now the seven super universe census directors are the totaling ones of what? The local universe. See how many more local universe census directors there are? There's a whole bunch more. There's one for every local universe. So they take all the figures from these local universes, add on them up for the super universe. You see that? And they have to track not only humans, okay, but they have to track Marancha beings, what state of Marancha beings they are, what state the spiritual beings are in, you know, whether they're first stage, second stage, third phase, fourth stage, whatever. They have to keep track of them and where they are. Right, so that's what these census directors do. All right, all right, let's go to the next paragraph. Millie, would you take the next one, please? Get my speaker turned on. Okay, all right. 
Seven census directors operate in Havona, one being stationed on the pilot world of each Havona circuit. Accepting these seven and the reserves of the order of the paradise worlds of spirit, all census directors function under the jurisdiction of the ancients of days. Okay, so we have seven on Havona. See here, there's one on each of the pilot worlds of Havona. See this here? And they keep trap all the beings in Havona. All right. And here's the one for the super universe. So let's take it. Rodney, would you take the next one? Yes. <clears throat> one census director presides at the headquarters of each super universe. While subject to such a chief director are thousands upon thousands one on the capital of every local universe. All personalities of this order are equal, excepting those on the Havana pilot worlds and the seven super universe chiefs. Okay, so this is a picture of the, uh, the one on Uversa, okay? And notice here it says Eusatia. This is the chief of the census directors of the Orvantan census directors. You see that? Okay. And all these beings are exactly the same except for the ones on Havona, right? And the ones on the head of the seven super universe. All right. Jane, would you take the next one, please? Okay. In the seven super universe, there are 100,000 census directors. And this number consists entirely of those assignable to local universes. It does not include the personal staff of Eusatia. The super universe chief of all Orvington directors. Eusatia, like the other super universe chiefs, is not directly attuned to the registration of intelligent will. He is solely attuned to his subordinates stationed in Orvington universes. Thus, he acts as a magnificent totaling personality for their reports coming in from the capitals of the local creations. So he's totally different than the others, isn't he? Okay, because he's a totaling personality. Now, what's the difference between him and the others? The others physically know exactly when every will creature is born and every will creature dies or changes to a different type of being, right? So that's their job. That's all they do, okay? But Eusatia does not sense the will creatures but dying and, and being born. Okay, Eusatia is a totaling personality that takes the reports from all the rest of them on the local universe cap capitals. Okay, so that's all Eusatia does, and he has his own staff doing that too. All right. Wouldn't he Let's... be considered kind of like Raymond in Rain Man if you saw the movie? Yeah, he would. Gary, in a sense, because he would have he would be attuned to totaling these thing up these, these beings up constantly, right? Because mm -hmm. they they have to be correct all the time. Now think about this: we've got a hundred thousand local universes in in Orvanta, right? So that means there's a hundred thousand uh, census directors, one for each local universe, right? And these hundred thousand census directors have to keep track of every single being dying and being born right so that those, these are busy little bees aren't they because they have to sense when every single being in the local universe dies or or moves on to the next level all right so that's all they do you know, they're busy enough doing that. That's a lot of people. If you think about it, think about how many people die every moment on this world. 
thousands, right? And think of all the babies that are born on this world, thousands every second, right? So he's, he stays pretty busy any way you look at it, right? Okay. Roger? Yeah. I have a question. So I'm a, I'm, I'm a little confused about the timing. So in our time, we think it's long, but in their time, it's short? Short, short, short. Yes. Short, short, short. Short, short. So yeah. it's well, like I a see. blinking. That's when Jesus said a blinking of an eye. That's the way this life said. It's a blinking of an eye. Right. So really, if thousands are dying, that means that is even a shorter instant up there. Hundred thousands every instant from there. From Whoa. There. Whoa. Yeah. yeah, it'd be hard to keep track of any way you look at it. Right. These must be mathematical minds that are beyond conception, you know, <laughs> if you think about it, because they're adding and subtracting beings constantly, right? Okay. Um, Gary, would you take the next one, please? I think uh, Gary's up Does it Who's start with from, from time to time? Yeah, from time to time. From time to time, the official recorders of Uversa place on their records the status of the super universe as it is indicated by the registrations in and upon the personal personality of Eustacia. Such consensus data is indigenous to the super universe. These reports are transmitted neither Eat, uh, neither to Havona nor to Paradise. And why is why that? Not? Because they're, the deities are all knowing all the time. It's not necessary. Okay? Not necessary at all. Okay. Well, if the boss don't need to know, why keep records? <laughs> well, the boss already knows. Think of it that way. You have an adjuster, right? That adjuster keeps track of whether you're dead or alive, too. So as soon as that adjuster is released, God the Father already knows you're, he's on his way, right? So mm -hmm. anyway, you look at it. Can't fool God any way you look at it. All right. Diane, would you take the next one? Okay. The census directors are concerned with human beings, as with other will creatures, only to the extent of recording the fact of will function. They are not concerned with the records of your life and its doings. They are not in any sense recording personalities. The census director of Nebadon, number 81,412 of Orvanton, now stationed in Salvington, is at this very moment personally conscious and aware of your, your living presence here on your rancho. Hmm. And he will afford the records confirmation of your death the moment you cease to function as a will creature. So the moment you live or the moment you die, he knows you're there or gone. One of the two, right? All right. Uh, Pam, would you take the next one, please? Yes. Um, am I? Okay. Um, Census directors register. Register. Census directors register the existence of a new will creature when the first act of will is performed. They indicate the death of a will creature when the last act of will takes place. The partial emergence of will observed in the reactions of certain of the higher animals does not belong to the domain of the census directors. They keep count of nothing but bona fide will creatures, and they are responsive to nothing but will function. Exactly how they register the function of will, we do not know. They don't really know how they, they sense this, but they know it. So, you know, we, we had talked about this in, in a previous meeting we had about this paper. And, you know, when is that first will reaction? Is that when a baby breathes the first time or it opens its eyes or it caught cries? They don't know. For sure. But, uh, and what is the last act of will? Is that the last time you take a breath on earth? You know, that, it's a good question, but we, not, nobody really knows. But that's how they keep track is the function of will itself. I don't, I don't see oh. breathing as part of your will. That's automatic. 
It's, yeah, well, it's the autonomic nervous system, but you have to have a will to live for that to happen, Millie. I would think that when you receive an adjuster is when. Well, see, that's that's no. where I'd have to disagree with you. I, I would think because would that's be, not will. No, because the first time a baby cries, for instance, he makes a decision to cry, right? He's upset about something. And yeah. you could call that a willful act, you know, and that's why I, understand. I, would, yeah. I would call it a, a, a will thing. Plus the fact, you know, babies, from the moment they're born, they can smile at you and grin at you and coo and all these other things. And, you know, who's to say that's not the will of a, a baby? Uh, working from the beginning, but the thought adjuster comes when a moral decision is made. That's the right. difference, right? Without that moral decision, the adjuster never comes, right? Up to that point, and if you never make that moral decision, you're a reward of what? The universe, right? And you're attached right. to your mother and fa father, right? Okay, so let's see. Millie, would you take the next one? Got it. These beings always have been and always will be census directors. They would be comparatively useless in any other division of universe labor, but they are infallible in function. They never default, neither do they falsify, couldn't work in our government, and not no. <laughs> withstanding, not withstanding their marvelous powers and unbelievable prerogatives. They are persons. They have recognizable spirit, presence, and form. So they're willed creatures or beings just like we are, right? But, but they have a specific function. And it's interesting here they say, Neither do they falsify, do they? So they would, they would never tell a lie whether someone was alive or dead. So I don't know why they would want to do that, but uh, they do say that there. Okay, personal aids of the infinite spirit. I can't right. imagine how they keep up with the people who die in, um, in a war, like hmm. the conflict with Russia right now when thousands yeah. go at one time. In a pandemic, they go, you know, periodically, but in a war, well, like the uh, Nagasaki or Hiroshima, millions went at once. One moment, right? At one time. In, yeah. In yeah. one moment, yes, which yeah. is long time compared to their time. So that right. was an infinitesimal spark of yeah. time. To the, yeah. Well, think of it this way, Millie. If a planet was on its was on a collision course with sanctioned beings on it, that you could have a whole planet going at one time. Oh you know? dear! You know they, uh, they need they need teacher aids. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know that would be something else. But okay, Rodney, would you take the next one? Personal aids of the infinite spirit. Yes. We have no authentic knowledge as to the time or manner of the creation of the personal aids. Their number must be legion, but it is a, not of record on your versa. From conservative deductions based on our knowledge of their work, I venture to estimate that their number extends high into the trillions. We hold the opinion that the infinite spirit is not limited as to the numbers in the creation of these personal aids. Now, think of it this day. The personal aids of the infinite spirit are super supreme high spiritual beings, okay? Uh, that work directly for the infinite spirit. They don't have a physical body as we would think of, right? Or a physical form. They're more like the um, 
inspired sp spirits they're they're more like the messengers the solitary messengers that you know without form type thing because they can they can travel at unbelievable speeds now the personal aids are totally assigned to doing work for the infinite spirit themselves so there's they don't even there's so many of them they don't even know how many there are and they they don't have any record of when they were started being creative they think they think that they they started being creative back when the infinite spirit first started okay so they don't really know numbers on that that's why they're estimating trillions okay all right, and we'll find out more about them in just a second here. Uh, Jane, would you take the next one? You're muted, Jane. The personal aids of the infinite spirit exist for the exclusive assistance of the paradise presence of the third person of deity. Although attached directly to the infinite spirit, and located on paradise, they flash to and fro to the utmost parts of creation. Wherever the circuits of the conjoint creator extend, there these personal aids may appear for the purpose of executing the bidding of the infinite spirit. They traverse space much as do the solitary messengers, but are not persons in the sense that the messengers are. Okay, so they're super fast beings, right? Just like the uh, solitary messengers are, okay? Uh, and they're kind of an unusual type of being. We're gonna find this out in the next paragraph. Gary, would you take the next paragraph? Yeah. <coughs> the personal aids are all equal and identical. Oh, a bunch of twins. Uh, yeah. They disclose no different differentiation of individuality. Though the conjoined actor looks upon them as true personalities, it is a difficult, it is difficult for others to regard them as real persons. They do not manifest a spirit presence to other spirit beings. Paradise origin beings are always aware of the proximity of these aids but we do not recognize a personality presence. The lack of such a presence form undoubtedly renders them all the more serviceable to the third person of deity. So they can be there and you're not, you don't know they're there, right? They don't have a spiritual presence and they don't have a personality presence. So, you know, one could be standing right next to you and you never know they're there, right? So what their actual job is, is a, a pretty much a mystery, right? Even though they're they, billions. They so. eavesdrop. They eavesdrop <laughs> for the infinite spirit. And this kind of this kind of tells you how it really is in the next little paragraph. Uh, Diane, would you take the next Oh, uh, wait, Roger? Yeah. So it really doesn't make it clearer if the infinite spirit bestowed personality onto them it sounds like it's a group personality well that's not like true, the board. Rodney, because it says even though we do not recognize the personality presence in the beginning of this paragraph it says though the conjoint actor looks upon them as true personalities exactly it's strange yeah but but everybody else finds it hard to regard them as real persons you know and one of the be reasons is this next little sentence go ahead and read that next little sentence diane of all the revealed orders of spirit beings taking origin in the infinite spirit the personal aids are about the only ones you will not encounter on your inward ascent to paradise okay why do you think we wouldn't encounter them on the way to paradise they're spies we're rec we won't recognize them. We won't know they're there. Oh, that's right. You know? So you won't encounter them on the way to paradise. Here's a picture. Kind of notice they're just a little wisp, you know? So, you know, 
to know they're even there, we won't know it, right? All right. They would know of us, but we, we wouldn't, wouldn't know, know of them. them. That's right. That's right. right. Okay. This is another unusual associate inspectors. Uh, you're going to like this one too. Um, Pam, would you take four the associate inspectors, the first paragraph? Yes. The seven supreme executives um, on the seven paradise spheres of the infinite spirit collectively function as the administrative board of super managers for the seven super universes. The associate inspectors are the personal embodiment of the authority of the supreme executives to the local universes of time and space. These high observers of the affairs of the local creations are the joint offspring of the infinite spirit and the seven master spirits of paradise. In the near times, of eternity, 700,000 were personalized and their reserve core abides on paradise. Why do you think 700,000 of them are per personalized? One for each super universe. Uh, That's one for each local universe, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And the super, no, local universe, 700,000. One for each local universe, right? Okay. These are, if you will, the informers for the, from the local universe to the seven supreme executives, okay? And we know the seven supreme executives work for what? The seven master spirits, right? So this is how the seven supreme executives and the seven master spirits stay informed on everything that goes on in a local universe. Make sense? Okay. Roger, we can't get by with nothing. We can't get by with nothing. That's right. There's <laughs> always some observer around. And that's why they, why do you think they call them associate inspectors, right? So they're the ones that hang out and inspect everything that's going on in the local universe to make sure it's going according to what the seven supreme executives want from the orders of the seven master spirits, right? So they, they're, they're the checks and balances, right? Of the- uh, Put it on a personal level, they're original, they are the original 007s. They are the original 007s, <laughs> that's right, right? All right, let's go down to the next paragraph. Uh, Pam, would you take it? No, I just read- No, you just, I mean Millie. Would you take it? Yes. Associate inspectors work under the direct supervision of the seven supreme executives, being their personal and powerful representatives to the local universe of time and space. An inspector is stationed on the headquarters sphere of each local creation and is a close associate would be resident union of days. And who's the union of days? That's the representative of the paradise trinity, right? Emmanuel, okay? So he works with Emmanuel. So if things aren't going the way they're supposed to, who's gonna step in and say, ah, 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 that's not the way we planned it, right? <laughs> okay, so that's what these associate inspectors do. All right, Rodney, would you take the next paragraph on that? Yes, uh, the associate inspectors receive reports and recommendations only from their subordinates, the assigned sentinels stationed on the capitals of the local systems of inhabited worlds, while they make their reports only to their immediate superior, the supreme executive of the super universe concerned. Okay, so the supreme executive is who? One of the seven executives that's right under the master spirit of that local universe, right? And they get their reports from, from whom? The assigned sentinels. Now, think about it this way. There's enough assigned sentinels, so there's one for every what? Local system. 
So there would be an assigned sentinel on Satania then, right? So think of it this way. When Lucifer went into rebellion, okay, what happened? The assigned sentinel immediately notified whom? The associate Emmanuel? inspector. No, the associate inspector. The associate inspector notified whom? The seven supreme executives, right? The seven supreme executives notified whom? The seventh master spirit. Who notified whom? The infinite spirit, right? Immediately, okay? So you see the pecking order or the chain of command, how this works, right? So now you understand why there's one on every single local system, right? There's not my cord loose there. Did it come back? There we go. All right. So that's the way this works, right? Okay. So did we re read that last paragraph or not? Yes. Yes. Okay. I just yeah. did. Okay. Assign sentinels, number five. Jane, would you read that first paragraph for the assigned sentinels? Okay. <clears throat> the assigned sentinels are coordinating personalities and liaison representatives of the seven supreme executives. They were personalized on paradise by the infinite spirit and were created for the specific purposes of their assignment. They are of stationary numbers and there are exactly 7 billion in existence. Why would there be 7 billion in existence? Because there's, there's seven the billion local systems. There's seven billion local systems, right? Ours is what? Satania, right? Got that? All right. And there are stationary numbers. Once they're assigned, they don't get rotated, I don't think. So here we go. Uh, Gary, would you take the next one? Much as an associate inspector represents the seven supreme executives to a whole local universe, so in each of the 10,000 systems of that local creation, there is an assigned sentinel who acts as the direct representative of the far distant and supreme board of super control for the affairs of all seven super universes. The Sentinels on duty in the local system governs of Orvington are acting under the direct authority of super executive, I mean, supreme executive number seven, the coordinator of the seven, seventh super universe, but in their administrative organization, all sentinels commissioned in a local universe are subordinate to the associate inspector stationed at universe headquarters. Okay, so all of them are responsible to the local universe representative, right? Uh, the associate inspector. So you have 10,000 assigned or 10 million assigned sentinels responsible to the uh, associate inspectors for each of the local universes, right? The 100,000 local universes. Okay. Now, this is correct something I said just a minute ago. Uh, Diane, would you take the next one? Within a local creation, the assigned sentinels serve in rotation being transferred from system to system. They are usually changed every millennium of local universe times. They are among the highest ranking personalities stationed on a system capital, but they never participate in deliberations concerned with system affairs. In the local systems, they serve as the ex officio heads of the four and 20 administrators. Can't read that word. Hailing from the evolutionary world, but otherwise ascending mortals have little contact with them. The sentinels are almost exclusively concerned in keeping the associate inspector of their universe 
fully informed on all matters relating to the welfare and state of the systems of their assignment. So the assigned sentinels uh, serve in rotation from system to system, not the uh, uh, associate inspectors, right? Okay. Uh, and they relate the, everything back to uh, the associate inspector uh, in their local universe, okay. Let's see here, Pam, would you take the next one, please? Um, yeah, and I just wanted to mention that it came, to, a realization came to me that when you go to the Marantia world, you're gonna be teaching this. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All over again. No, I won't be teaching it. You guys will. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, we all take our... We all um, will be teaching it. That's right. <laughs> assigned okay. sentinels and associate inspectors do not report to the Supreme Executives through a super universe headquarters. They are responsible solely to the Supreme Executives of the super universe concerned their activities are distinct from the administration of the ancients of days. So they, they report uh, directly to the Supreme Executives, okay? Uh, it's interesting uh, what you just said before. Uh, yeah. you, know, you know how they know that you have learned what you're supposed to learn to pass you on to the next world? Hmm. Your ability to teach it. Your ability to teach it? Yes. But Roger, your yeah. ability to teach what? What we're learning here every Tuesday and Thursday. I see. Um, you know, that makes sense. Yeah. The so, only way they can be sure that you know what you have learned is to teach someone else. But what if our, like for me, my, my strength is children. I, I know that I'm going to go to the Marantia worlds and be um, involved with babies and children and helping people who never had children to learn about that, you know, so that's my, my thing that I'm going to start learning or teaching. What do you think is the most important thing you teach ch children, Pam? Well, about God. Well, you got it. <laughs> that's what this is. <laughs> <laughs> Bingo! Yeah. <laughs> the big yeah. light bulb just came on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? It's the most important thing they learn. Oh, I right? know. I it know. It is. Okay. Uh, uh, the other thing I want to say about this paragraph is this. They make a distinct statement here, and they say this on purpose, and that is what? Their activities are distinct from the administration of the ancients of days. Do you see that? So what they report yeah, I, back- I saw that, yeah. Yeah, the, what they report back to the uh, Supreme Executives uh, is outside everything that the, the ancients of days reports to them and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. their, their purvy is totally different in a different direction, right? Mm -hmm. So just wanted to make and sure again, that was clear. Where are the Supreme Executives? They are, they are stationed on the worlds of um, the, the infinite spirit on the, the seven worlds that go around paradise. Exactly. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now I forgot who just read. I read. Okay. Millie, would you take the next one, please? Got it. The Supreme Executives associate inspectors and assigned sentinels together with the omnifium, uh, omnifium, omnifium. Omnifium. Omni, I knew, omnifium, together with yep. the omnifium and a host of unrevealed personalities constitute an efficient, direct, centralized, but far from system of advisory and administrative coordination of all the grand universe of things and beings. Notice here it also has a host of unrevealed personalities. You see that? Mm. Okay. So they tell us about all a lot of it, but they don't tell us all of it. 
right? So mm. there's a lot of beings involved in all the stuff we've been studying that they have never taught us anything about and we'll learn about when we get there because we don't have anything to relate it to. Mm. Okay. The graduate guides. Rodney, would you take the first paragraph there on the graduate guides? Yes. The graduate guides as a group sponsor and conduct the high university of technical instruction and spiritual training, which is so essential to mortal attainment of the goal of the ages. God, rest, and then eternity of perfected service. These highly personal beings take their name from the nature and purpose of their work. They are exclusively devoted to the task of guiding the mortal graduates from the super universes of time through the Havana course of instruction and training, which serves to prepare the ascending pilgrims for administration to paradise and the core of the finality. Admission to paradise, not the administration. Admission, Admission to paradise and the core of finality. So, the, you get assigned a graduate guide when you hit the first planet of Havona, okay? And that graduate guide is responsible to teach you all the things you need to know to recognize first the Supreme, then the Infinite Spirit, and then the Son, the Eternal Son, and eventually God the Father. That's what the graduate guide does. And it prepares you for your admission to paradise and eventually the core of finality. So these graduate guides are one of the most important beings you'll ever meet. Okay. And that graduate guide will go with you all the way through Havana. All right. And they're going to talk about a lot about this in the next few paragraphs. So Jane, would you take the next one? Okay. I am not forbidden to undertake to tell you of the work of these graduate guides, but it is so ultra spiritual that I despair of being able to adequately portray to the material mind a concept of their manifold activities. On the mentioned worlds, after your vision range is extended, and you are freed from the fetters of material comparisons, you can begin to comprehend the meaning of those realities, which I cannot see nor hear here, and which have never entered the concept of human minds. Even those things which God has prepared for those who love such eternal ver ver verities. verities. You, go. you are not always to be so limited in the range of your vision and spiritual comprehension. And what was, where did those quotes come from? Jesus himself. Jesus' words. That's right. That eyes have not seen nor, nor ears heard that, that which has been prepared by God for his children, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So we got a lot to look forward to here. Um, Gary, would you take the next one? The graduate's guides are engaged in piloting the pilgrims of time through the seven circuits of Avona worlds. The guide who greets you upon your arrival on the receiving world of the outer Havana circuit will remain with you throughout your entire career on the heavenly circuits, that's nice. Yes. Though you will associate with countless other personalities during your soldiering on a billion worlds, your graduate guide will follow you to the ends of your Havana progression and will witness your entrance into the terminal slumber of time, the sleep of eternal transit to the... Uh, Paradise goal, where upon awakening, you will be greeted by the paradise companion assigned to welcome you and perhaps to remain with you until you are initiated as a member of the mortal core of 
the finalities. And that's the last time you'll ever sleep on an angel transport, right? The last slumber to, of eternity till you get to paradise. All right. All right, dear, would you put the next one, please? The number of graduate guides is beyond the power of human minds to grasp, and they continue to appear. Their origin is something of a mystery. They have not existed from eternity. They are mysteriously, they mysteriously appear as they are needed. There is no record of a graduate guide in all the realms of the central universe until that far distant day when the first mortal pilgrim of all time made his way to the outer belt of the central creation. The instant he arrived on the pilot world of the outer circuit, he was met with friendly greetings by Malvorian, the first of the graduate guides, and now the chief of their supreme council and the director of their vast educational organization. So when the very first one was needed, he appeared, right? He was eventuated, I guess, right? Or that probably reason. would have been a strange experience for the first mortal to ever appear. Yeah, it would be. That's you when know? the first broadcast went out too, right? The uh, Universal bar Broadcast. That's the first I mean, one. How out important that was. Yeah. That was uh, celebration. It was a celebration. Uh, Pam, would you take the next sentence in the paragraph under that on the Paradise Records of Havana? You're muted, Pam. Sorry. Um, on the Paradise Records of Havona, in the section denominated Graduate Guides, there appears this initial entry. And Malvorian, the first of this order, did greet and instruct the pilgrim discoverer of Havona and did conduct him from the outer circuits of initial experience step by step and circuit by circuit until the he stood in the very presence of the source and destiny of all personalities subsequently crossing the threshold of eternity to paradise who is the source of and destiny god the father god. right all right um let's see here Millie, would you take the next one? Yes. At that far distant time, I was attached to the service of the Ancients of Days on Universa, and we all rejoiced in the assurance that eventually pilgrims from our super universe would reach Havona. For ages, we have been taught that the evolutionary creatures of space would attain paradise and the thrill of all time, the thrill of all time swept through the heavenly courts. And when the first pilgrims actually arrived, swept through the courts, when the first pilgrims actually, you mean somebody's actually made it there from here? Yeah, someone's actually made it there from here. All we're right. so young. Yeah, we're such a young yeah. planet. Yeah, now we. Uh, yeah, we're going to have a very short time next meeting because we we'll only have one section left. But let's finish this section um, before we quit for tonight. Rodney, would you uh, take the next one, please? Hey, Koki. The name of this pilgrim, discoverer of Havana, is Grand Fonda, and he hailed from Planet Three Hundred and Forty One of system 84 and constellation 62 of local universe 1131 situated in the super universe number one. His arrival was the signal for the establishment of the broadcast service of the universe of universes. Therefore, only the broadcast of the super universes and the local universes had been an operation. But the announcement of the arrival of Grand Fonda at the portals of Havana 
signalized the inauguration of the Space Reports of Glory, so named because the initial universe broadcast reported the Havana arrival of the first of the evolutionary beings to attain entrance upon the goal of ascendant existence. The space reports of glory. How about that? The first person to arrive. All right, we got one more paragraph. Jane, would you take that last one for this section? Okay. Graduate guides never leave the Havana worlds. They are dedicated to the service of the graduate pilgrims of time and space. And you will sometime meet these noble beings face to face if you do not reject the certain and all perfected plan designed to affect your survival and ascension. Notice it says here, if you do not reject certain. So it's your choice if you want to go on. Free will, right? And that's, that's what will happen. Okay, we've got one more section. It's the origin of graduate guides, and we will do that uh, next Tuesday. It'll be a short meeting because we only have one section left. So I'll probably be about 30 minutes. Quick. Every time I say that, we end up talking for an hour. So, <laughs> so no one knows for sure, right? <laughs> All right. Let's have a little prayer. and We'll close for tonight. We're going to make it exactly on 7 o'clock. Um, Melly, would you like to short, close us in prayer tonight? I'll do that. Thank you. All right. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for our assembly here. We're grateful for this book, and we're grateful for you sending this message to tell us where Christ Michael came from and how we may follow him and where we will go. Thank you so much. We haven't a clue. And we just told them, you die, you go to heaven. Well, it's not that simple, and we're so glad you explained this to you. Best of you. Thank you so much. We are grateful. We're grateful for for Roger helping us through this book. We're grateful for Christ Michael who set the standard for us. Amen. 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 Thank you all for joining us. Please come and see us again. Uh, let me stop the live stream. Let me stop, the stream. Huh? stop the recording. Yeah. And I will stop the recording here. <laughs>